Good afternoon to you, Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Monday, the 29th of June, 2015. A lot to talk about here, even though there's not a lot going on. Let's start with the Southern Oscillation Index here from the Bureau of Meteorology. And this is the area that we're interested in right here. The SOI numbers significantly down after coming up a little bit uh, for a few weeks. They really got hammered, and that is the pressure difference between Tahiti and Darwin in Australia. And it all has to do with how the trade winds flow uh, when there's high pressure in one area versus low pressure in the other. And you get this index that we like to follow. And just to simplify it, when these numbers are negative like they are now, especially these daily contributors and uh, really the 90-day as well, all three of them, all of these index patterns, very important. But when they're all negative like this, especially pretty substantially so, that leads us to this. Uh, and I think it's very obvious. Right here is this El Nino uh, bordering on strong. It's a pretty uh, significant El Nino event, an abnormal warming of the equatorial waters in the Pacific. And then you contrast that to the colder than normal water here in the deep tropics of the Atlantic Basin. And then you have this warmer than normal subtropical uh, water to the north there. And it just says, look, we're probably not going to have much, if any, Cape Verde hurricane activity coming all the way across this year. Is it possible that one or two might slip through? Maybe. But this is about as hostile a pattern as you could ever want to see for development in this area of the Atlantic Basin over the next few months. Now, that leaves open this area right through here, which is where uh, pretty much everybody lives who has any concern about Atlantic hurricanes. That includes, of course, Bermuda, the Canadian Maritimes up here, and then the East Coast and the Gulf Coast of the United States, and then Mexico, Cuba, the Bahamas, etc. It has been uh, shown in research that the subtropics, uh, including parts of the Gulf of Mexico, the Southwest Atlantic, generally this region right through here isn't really affected by the El Nino itself. And so what happens is you get these tropical waves that come off and they stay uh, completely benign out through this area. And then when they get up into the subtropics here, the Southwest Atlantic Basin, eastern Gulf of Mexico, maybe the extreme northwest Caribbean Sea, then they can blossom and do so quite substantially under uh, almost ideal conditions. We saw that in 1992 with Hurricane Andrew, and there are other examples. 1957, uh, right around this date, uh, Hurricane Audrey came into southwest Louisiana. And so we're not looking for a big bunch of hurricanes this year. It's those one or two that could form close to home that I think should have people nervous because you've got very, very warm water compared to average all around these big population areas. And all it takes is that one event. I know it's cliche, but it is time to start paying attention to this because we've got about a month and a half to go. And then the season naturally tries to evolve towards producing hurricanes. And it'll be a matter of what can overcome these negative conditions that are in place. So another way to look at it, this is the subsurface uh, anomalies map. And again, very strong El Nino signal here in the eastern two-thirds to three-fifths of the Pacific. Large area of cold water being held at bay, quite literally, to the west. And at depth here, uh, it's going to be a while, several months probably, before this begins to let go uh, at all. And so we're going to be sort of stuck with this El Nino pattern in the Pacific for the rest of the hurricane season. And that's going to mean we're going to have some pretty powerful typhoons in the Pacific itself and probably several more very strong hurricanes in the eastern Pacific. So another way to look at things, uh, since we're on sea surface temperatures now, and those do play a big role. Obviously, the atmosphere has to cooperate as well. But the other item of note is the uh, tropical cyclone heat potential how much energy is in the water, not just at the surface, but below, 10, 25, 50, 100 meters or more. And we're seeing that the heat content is starting to build here off the east coast, uh, not quite as substantial as you see inside this area, 
but this is pretty significant for the end of June that we do have some decent ocean heat content at the lower end of the scale developing just off the southeast coast of the US certainly off the coast of Florida the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean in fact it's pretty much where it was this time last year see if I can get the maps to match here in their scale here it is today here it is last year it's pretty much right where we were last year and we had not much activity overall we did have Hurricane Arthur along the North Carolina Outer Banks here and then of course in the latter part of the season Bermuda took a direct hit from Hurricanes Fay and Gonzalo and uh, so this heat content will be important if we get a hurricane developing and a lot of that ocean heat content around those population centers does not bode well so we we'll just have to start paying more attention here as we get through the next few weeks now let's look at the actual temperatures if you were to go out in the water uh, 31 degrees Celsius all off the west coast of Florida here that's just ridiculous and then right there near Tarpon Springs and vicinity I believe south of Cedar Key is a little tiny area of 32 degrees Celsius uh, all of this green coloring is uh, 30 Celsius and that encompasses a good deal of the northern Gulf Coast so you see my concern here uh, if you get a hurricane coming through and it enters very very favorable conditions here you have very warm surface water as well as quite warm uh, ocean heat content almost at the upper end of the scale here so this is where it's starting to become important folks uh, then we have the Atlantic also running above normal water temperatures all along the coast here in the low to mid 80s and that extends all the way out into the Atlantic here very warm water so no question at all about that uh, very warm water and uh, now it's just a matter of will something take advantage of it well we can tell you it's not going to happen anytime soon this is a really nice satellite picture showing most of the uh, continent of Africa that we're interested in uh, for tropical purposes all of this dark color up here represents very hot weather as you can imagine over portions of Libya over to Morocco and then the equatorial region in the Congo just ridiculously hot with the intertropical convergent zone uh, just an amazing planet we live on isn't it that you can see this and you can also see some Saharan air layer kind of intruding here as evidenced by these low clouds in the satellite picture very dry stable air continues to just kind of roll off of the continent out into the Atlantic keeping things very very tranquil and that's probably going to be the way it is for the remainder of the hurricane season but you're still going to have these waves of low pressure that develop and move off and head westward and it's again a matter of will they find that four to six day window of opportunity to develop near land masses and nobody can tell us that this far out there are some indications from some of the long-range models you know, 45 to 60 days out that there may be a couple of interesting items to watch uh, it's interesting when that shows up in those low resolution models that far out you know in a year like this you have to pay attention to it so it's the end of June we don't really look for development off Africa right now anyway and this year is no exception now it's talking about the Pacific with the typhoons uh, that are probably getting ready to go crazy this is the Madden Julian oscillation forecast for the next two weeks and the Euro uh, and the GFS the GFS shown here indicating a very high amplitude uh, MJO looks like one of those ribbons right like you, you, know, you put on a ribbon for bring the troops home or remembering a police officer that's fallen or whatever well this is the green and yellow ribbon of MJO and it is really going crazy here when you see that kind of an amplification there indicating very very strong upward motion in the Pacific and uh, we're probably going to have a couple of incredible typhoons develop and you'll see that on the news uh, I'm sure as well as in the hurricane typhoon blogosphere the euro showing pretty much the same thing as the GFS high amplitude ampl uh, amplification of the MGO and then it kind of crashes back into the null region instead of coming around so we'll see we'll wait and see if it does that and then just goes away or will it swing around and try to make the western hemisphere uh, somewhat busy including parts of the eastern Pacific now I want to show you this this is interesting uh, the last month or so of wind shear let me just outline what's what 
This is the west coast of Africa. And here is North America right here. All right. Try to outline it as best I can. There's South America and the west coast over here. And then what you have in between, of course, is the Atlantic Basin. And then the different colors are showing us the magnitude and the vector or the direction uh, of travel of wind shear. The difference in wind speed and direction between about 5,000 feet in the atmosphere and 40,000 feet, or what we call vertical wind shear. And these are the anomalies, how much has been departing from normal. And across most of the Atlantic Basin, all of these blue colors in here, indicating very high wind shear compared to normal. But look at this. Let me zoom in because this is what I was talking about. This is very, very important. Right around here, not only where I live, but you know, where is here? Uh, the southeast, Florida, the eastern gulf, the wind shear was running uh, a little bit below normal to some degree, uh, substantially below normal. And that's what bothers me. And that's all across the subtropics here. So you get something coming off that's you know, rather innocuous. It gets up into this region, takes advantage of this low shear, warm water environment, and you can have yourself a big problem with very short notice. Uh, and this isn't fear mongering. I'm just sh this is this is factual. Uh, the wind shear there in the deep tropics way above normal. Up here in the subtropics below normal, and the water temperature is running above normal. You can just put it together and understand as unlikely as it may be there could be a big disaster waiting if something comes along to take advantage of it. Imagine if we had those kinds of tools uh, as resolved as that is back in 1992 might have helped to at least kind of sniff out the possibility of Andrew that year. 1992 seems like forever ago and in the technological world it was. All right well that's it really nothing else to talk about. Today was just kind of a a look through sea surface temperature anomalies and where we are and where we're headed. Uh, absolutely nothing going on in the Atlantic or the Pacific to even show a satellite picture of to speak of. So that's good news as we end the month of June. All right. Well, that's it for me for today. Really nothing to talk about the rest of the week. I might come up with something of interest, uh, maybe Wednesday or Friday instead of just going the whole week doing nothing. Uh, we'll come up with something. Let's, let's call it Wednesday. All right. I'll have another topic of conversation for us to look at on Wednesday and uh, but at least you know the week ahead is going to be trouble free in the tropics again mark sutter hurricane track dot com thank you as always for tuning in i'll talk to you again on wednesday